not not a not a bad idea i don't think to just try to get it out there and pick up your free win and then tuck it back away because the only thing you're trying to do is you're trying to avoid it hitting into the uh, the hunter matchup a lot of people think priest is really bad for freeze mage but uh, i in my experience and kind of like watching streams and tournaments things of that nature freeze mage wins a lot of those games and it's because priest can they can heal up but they don't have the ability to kind of extend their life beyond 30. so when an alexstrasza hits the board if they don't have like fire like holy fire and shadow or death and then like another holy fire and then heal it really puts a big damper on their ability to win the game. It's just like they have enough reach to actually extend through two Holy Fires and a couple of hero powers after Alex Straza hits the board. And we actually know that D2 does, only has one copy of Holy Fire in his deck. We saw his entire deck uh, in the last game. Or yeah, yeah pretty <laughs> or, or close to it. Yep. So unless the very last two cards were Holy Fires, which I'm pretty sure we saw all 30 cards, he's only got one copy of Holy Fire in his deck. And that's, the, that's a card that's really important against Freeze Mage, but not something you should be teching for. Like you should just be kind of playing one of them. I think two of them is really clunky. Uh, it can really muck up your draws, and it's like it's a six drop that doesn't act proactively do anything. So uh, you're just going to be seeing it so often by turn six anyway that when you have two copies, you don't want to be seeing two copies uh, before turn six. And, and, and so I think it's wise to run one of them, but you know it certainly has the ability to cost them in that matchup. That's right. Uh, before we go into more into further of uh, talk about the finals, we also want to congratulate Number Guy for getting four hundred dollars. Top three was in the money. Uh, Second place is guaranteed 600, so D2 and Forsen uh, have secured that, and then 1,000 for the winner. You can find more information at BattleTheBest.com. We had eight players come all the way through, uh, but now it's just down to Forsen and D2, a rematch from the winner's finals. And I believe that D2 has to win two best of fives in order to win this tournament, correct? Right, that's the winner's advantage uh, in this, is that Forsen hasn't lost a match yet, and this is a double elimination tournament, so his winner's advantage is that he actually has to lose two best of five matchups and this best of five matchup for those of you uh just joining us or haven't been following the tournament too closely this isn't a normal best of five like you would have uh it's normal in the sense that these both players these players have brought four decks and they have a band each but the winner can actually choose to switch their deck after they've won and pull out one of the decks that they still have that's unlocked so uh we see that utilized by both of these players a lot in this tournament so far so i'd love to see what happens and kind of going from there um d2 has warrior selected and so I'm guessing that means we have an incorrect ban uh, on the screen. Uh, I, think, I think the POVs have been switched. Forsen's oh, the POVs have been switched? It okay. has to be. I don't think Ian Forsen is playing Priest. Oh, he's not playing Priest. You're right. Yeah, so the, the point of views are incorrect at the moment. D2 is actually playing Priest and Forsen's playing Warrior. So uh, we'll get that fixed as soon as we possibly can. And go from there. Yeah, unless I'm mistaken, and Forsen does have Priest in his lineup. Forsen had Mage, Warlock, Hunter, and Warrior, right? And Warrior, yeah. Okay, so yeah. uh, this is D2. Okay, good turn two play. Is this correct? Pretty standard. Oh. Yeah, I'm assuming this Warrior's for it. Like, we didn't see D2 shuffle over his hand very much. He's like very calm and collected. And uh, yep. keeps his mouse in one place because uh, he's not spazzing out like some of the players like uh, we've seen Darquanix do in the past. But um, <laughs> so these these perspectives are flipped at the moment. Okay, uh, so he plays this injured blade master, but that's going to immediately get shut down. Forsen's warmed up. He's been streaming all day, but he hasn't been doing any scouting. I wonder if he's been watching that match though wonder if he was watching that match, or maybe he was outside taking a really long smoke break. I mean, I imagine he would be watching that match. Yeah, I think so too, but you never know. Force and does force and things. <laughs> so, That's cool Taskmaster so here is decent. You start putting on pressure and you can answer whatever comes out. Not to mention, um, you know, in the next couple of turns, you're going to be worried about Cabal Shadow Priest taking this Armor Smith. Right. So you're okay if it's taking the cool Taskmaster, but not not the Armor Smith. Thought Steel can be interesting here, because what if he takes weapons from Forsen and then the Harrison Jones becomes relevant? Yeah, that definitely could be a relevant play. Steals an Armor Smith instead. Execute, I think, is the bigger is the bigger steal here with uh, um, with his thought steal, because execute acts as another form of like the shadow word deaths that he needs for the big legendaries. 
that he'll eventually run out. But with two Shadow or Deaths, Mind Control, and Execute, is there any Legendary that he's not prepared for? Um, I think it's a Legendary Start is what he's not prepared for. I'm just getting beat up right now. So of course, Harrison getting slammed. No, no question about that. Mm. It's, it's so unlikely that they actually steal a weapon from you. It's not that unlikely, but yeah, it's it's, it's rather on the improbable side of things. Right. It's worth it to just play it and try to get value out of the actual damage for it, because I think one of the ways that Warrior wins this matchup is they actually just make a big push. And so scaling into the late game, Priest doesn't have time to recover the board. Sure. Uh, you know, he's been sp spending so long trying to avoid bad trades with Fiery War Axe. He's been avoid playing Northshire Cleric. He's been saving Shadow Madness, but there hasn't been good targets. Oh, Gromish uh, picks as up. As a result, he, he plays couple of awkward plays like the, the armorsmith is doing nothing um in fact they might just bait out and execute which would be surprising well a couple different ways to handle it i mean you can still you can still use harrison to take care of it say that cruel taskmaster crash an armorsmith use your weapon right harrison to the three four and then continue to to push for damage sure the way we're doing this is that uh he's just not losing any minions which is nice and he also has the flexibility of pushing out a weapon, or in this case, he's using shield block because he wants to... Oh, sorry. I, I was like, he's going to use shield block, and he's going to draw execute to join the shadow word death and mind control. Like, oh, that's not the right POV. <laughs> We're fixing that as soon as we can. Yeah, POVs are getting swapped over right now. The POV was backwards. So apologies for that. But, you know, it's just the nature of how this goes sometimes. Actually, pretty wise to keep his Harrison healthy because now it's not vulnerable to... Uh, to either a Shadow Menace on one of his minions or to a, like a Holy Nova or a Smite or something like that. And then in the off chance that your opponent stole an Execute from you, which is exactly what happened, uh, it's it's not going to be this way. It's You're not going to get punished for it either. So uh, point of views are now correct. Uh, Forsen is the warrior player. D2 is playing Priest. And yeah, this is going to be Smite onto this Harrison, it looks like. I'm going to continue to save that Execute. No real reason to use it right now. Just the 2-1 the two, yep. the two is not that big of a threat. He's saving SQ, saving Shadow Word Death, doing his best to try and maximize what he can. Uh, is there a way for Forsen to push for potential game-ending damage with Gromosh? Well, part of what he can do, too, is uh, he can he can just use his his threat of uh, the power on the board to extend into Ysera, and then hope that something good gets drawn off Ysera and he can go from there. So, like, on turn 8, he actually gets access to Ysera, so that's two turns before Mind Control gets played, which is pretty important. Hmm. I would like him, however, to save that that uh, that uh Death Spike point. I don't know. I, it's, I can see it go both ways now, because if his opponent extends too far into this, uh, he does just have Lethal next turn. But at the same point, it's like, you may have to kill a minion your opponent plays. Um, In which case, you're not going to be getting value from... uh. I'm sorry, um, you're not going to be able to actually extend the reach this turn, so I would imagine that this Sludge Belcher is going to die. Yeah, but how do you choose to do it? Do you silence it? I think, Are you worried yeah, about Sylvanas? I'm sorry, I, I meant, I meant like, silence is the way that, that it dies, but, um, you know, something's better than nothing. He's got a lot of options, though. I mean, he can just execute it. Execute. Yeah, he's, he's still just a little bit short. Mana wise and, or damage wise of lethal. Yeah, it looks like. I think a good play to be able to push here would just be the Iron Beak out of this and then use your Armorsmith to execute it. I don't mind playing Ysera by any means. That's true. Ysera could give you the opportunity to get a buff on the Gromosh for next turn. Yeah. But then. Let's see. I mean, oh, Force one dangerous. mana off lethal right now. Yeah. Which is just unfortunate. Yeah, so he's going to go okay. for Ysera, which means nothing's going to be attacking this turn, I don't think. Yep. Yes. So Ysera, potential to get executed here. All right. Ooh, Jareen comes decent. in hand. <laughs> you can get past the taunt that way. Yep. Zero mana sap. How about it? And you also Ooh, have... Nova. Check this out. You also have uh, execute. So you have the ability to execute Dream and still go for Gromosh with damage to the face. That's so crazy. And he still has access to the owl too. So turn nine, this is... Uh, potentially enough, if this, like, say this Ysera lives uh, by some miracle chance. 
There's no like way. If he, just, if he just assumes that silence is enough, which would be really weird, I think. No, he's going to have to execute the Chisera. That's, in fact, picking up that execute was so important because of threats like Yasera. Yep. But how does he choose to do it? Does he want to use Holy Nova? Does he want to attack and reduce the life of the Sludge Belcher and then Holy Nova? Heal up? Looks like all he wants... pretty good options. Oh, well, it looks to me he's going to... Yeah, he's going to attack this Armor Smith, Northshire Cleric, Holy Nova, and then go from there. Mm -hmm. So he draws a card out of this. He picks off his opponent's two small minions, which are actually really important right now. And okay. that may be enough of a of a defense to actually stave off this attack that Forsen's made. Oh yeah, for sure. There's not enough damage anymore. Forsen I'd like to see to... him save his dream here. Problem is, um, Owl gives up uh, everything on the board already, and you know that your opponent still holds cards like Shadow War Death and Mind Control, so Gromash is off the table. Yep. Gosh, these are, these are all, like, not very strong plays. I think he's just going to push. That's likely his best way to win. Oh, I don't know. I can't these think of... Um, yeah. These are all very perilous situations. Is there a possibility of using Fiery War Axe to pop the Death Spite and then... Actually, you don't really need to do that. If you're going to do that, you might as well yeah. swing. Yeah, you need the extra damage. Yeah. Alright, he's going to go for it. I think this oh is boy. one of his best ways to try to win the game. It's going to be met very easily with like a shadow or death or something I, just, I cannot imagine him going for the north share cleric right now you've already lost the card advantage battle and you just have to hope that you can close it out Ugh, this is really hard to decide oh gosh i don't like that so now at this point you're hoping that your opponent just doesn't have access to shadow or death or mind control he has both by the way yeah yeah this mind control is gonna be brutal mind control to start swinging it back and Forsen doesn't have Gorhal, right? He's running like Hogger instead of Gorhal in his deck. Yeah, we haven't seen we haven't seen Gorhal in Forsen's deck. Hmm, well. D2 trying to think about the best way to go about this. Um, but he will use one of yeah. his big removal cards. Mind Control, of course. Probably the best one at his disposal. Puts 10 damage right back on his opponent. Yep. Ugh, now this is a liability once more because Cabal Shadow Priest comes and shuts it down. Forsen's in big trouble. You gotta start swinging with that axe. I mean, you're, you're not gonna recover the board state. You just have to hope that somehow you can actually deal enough damage to win. Oh, he's going to save it, though. He's expecting a Cabal Shadow Priest. And he's going to have to axe the 1-3 the down. That's how he feels, but is that really what he needs to do? Like, what other cards does he have that can bring him back in there? I don't think there are any. Let's see. Well, brawl. maybe Brawl. Maybe brawl. <laughs> <laughs> Then you can wait, right? How many cards can you afford to give your to your opponent, though? Well, you just silence the one three. Do you brawl here? I think I want him to commit more to the board. So, yeah. And th this is another so. part of the. That's what it's like the game plan inconsistencies. We've been seeing this a lot this tournament, where people choose to not attack or like they deviate from their game plan for like one turn. Like, if he draws a weapon next turn, he might have actually just lost the potential to continue to reach for this game. I don't know if it's there to begin with, but... Well, I think now is the time to brawl. It's too much pressure on the board. Yeah, probably a bit too much. 
And right? he plays he the Al first because he actually gets to win the brawl. Yeah. I mean, it's possible. Oh, oh it so was close. close. But uh, I guess next best option, he gets a board clear. Yep. So he's going to go for big game hunter. This is a very, very uh, <laughs> unintimidating push that's being made. It can't be Shadow Word Death, though. Four power minions are tough for priests to deal with. So I heard. Oh, Thought Steel oh, comes like... into play. That is this a sweep. Like... Oh. oh, he's not going to use Pyromancer with it. All right. Picks up uh, Cruel Taskmaster to go along with it, though. Now you can. In fact, uh, Wild Pyromancer silence and a Cruel Taskmaster draws you more cards. Yep. Um, okay. He's not even going to go for that. He's actually just going to pay the life. He's really confident. I mean, there's eight damage. Yeah. Oh, Ragnaros! It has to be Ragnaros! Oh, wow. Oh, I just realized that Ragnaros was still an out for Forsen. All right, do you just Cruel Taskmaster your guy to get in there for six? I think you do. Yeah, because then Ragnaros still becomes an out. Yep. Does it not? I think it does. It also, it also puts a 2-2 two -two on the board, so you do have more attack potential this way, too. Six, so it's going to activate Shadow Word Death. It can be Shadow Word Death now, but... That's so funny. Shadow or death on BGH because you don't have any other good targets. Oh, he picks up Holy Fire. I think that's going to be a closeout card. Because now even well, Ragnaros is going to be enough damage. That's right. Oh my gosh. That's if he plays it this turn, though. He may not play it this turn. It's true. He might feel like BGH and Dark Cultist, and he just needs to load up the board and start pushing at his opponent. He gets careless. If he gets curious, but I don't feel like he will. I think D2 knows now he should just clear Holy Fire. He's done the right thing. And for the most part, barring that one Hunter game, D2 still knows how to play Priest, even though people would like to think otherwise. Where goes the heal? Nope. It is oh, not man, that. It's just right in the Black Knight, too. Oh, boy. It's getting lots of needed... information, though. As if he needed any more problems to fight against. What do you think his next card is? Ragnaros? Um, Hogger? Shield, shield slam? slam? Yeah. It's gotta be Shield Slam. It's gotta be. It's the only card that makes sense. Ah. Uh. All right. Well, uh, I don't really feel like forcing even if his big legendary cards like Alex Straws will pull him back. Nope. Sledge Belcher is not going to do it. His opponent can kill it and then even drop Ysera. This stage, Forsen's also getting good bat information, too. He knows his opponent yeah. plays Black Knight. He sh yeah, he shouldn't be conceding this game. Um, I mean, in the event that he didn't watch the last game, he should be paying attention very closely to make sure that he's got everything in check. I think D2 also saving silence for Sylvanas. Okay, shield block digs deeper. Baron he draws two Yedis. shield blocks. He can shield slam the face. He could into Ragnaros, but unfortunately that's not possible. A Baron again, zoom in on the destruction that's going to happen to uh, Forces Board in a moment. He kills his own sludge. Oh, wow. not those. Uh, Worst uh, wingman ever. No. This is... Okay, D2 is going for more BM again. <laughs> We're just pushing out damage at this point. That's 12. true. Yeah, no 12-point damage spells, unfortunately. Even Deathwing out. I mean, maybe two Deathwings can get him back into this. Deathwing would be great. Ragnaros right on time. It's too late, he though. <laughs> face. He wants to hit the face with this, right? Get him, hit Ragnaros. Punish face. him. No. Good enough. Good enough, yeah, I suppose. Look at that micro, though, all over the screen. All right. I bet he can oh, destroy those houses. he can houses. steal it. He can steal Ragnaros. <laughs> and he does steal uh, it this time. It's something we've seen him not do about 60 times so far this tournament. Really being patient with all of his spells. Forsen's going to get the concede up, though. So drops down one game to zero to D2. And not one that I'm happy to lose off the bat, but... um. You know, D2, he, he plays himself a lot of warriors, so he's, I think he's deflected this tack. 
uh, it deflected the attack pretty well. Once he made the recovery point from Gromish, it was just downhill from Force, and it's like he had one turn to draw Ragnaros, and then the Ragnaros also had to get lucky and hit him in the face, so pretty high win percentage once you've gotten past that point, and it's just that's the nature of the game. Oh, yeah, for sure. Now uh, Forsen is down in his warrior. D2 has Hunter and Handlock remaining. He can choose to switch immediately and see how he fares against the rest, but I feel like Priest might be his best option to stick right here. What do you think? Oh, um, I guess he's going to switch, apparently. Yeah, yeah, it might it might be his best option, but... Um, you know, I think Hunter is fine here, because you're either going to be playing a mirror match or you're playing against Freeze Mage. And I think that's one that you're that you're very comfortable with, so I, I think it's I think it's okay to switch here. But I don't I don't really know if it matters that much in the in the long run, but I think yeah. switching's fine. I think he wants to avo also avoid like having his priest play against Freeze Mage, um, if he sticks on it. Yeah. And gives like a free win for no reason. Uh, so yeah. I think D two will switch immediately. Seems like it's a reasonable strategy. Let's see if it pays off. He also might be switching over to Handlock to see what Forsen's going to queue up, and then if Forsen decides to switch. He knows what he's going to be switching into, so then he can queue up his deck accordingly. Which is like, you know, a little bit deeper, but a, a totally reasonable uh, thing to be happening. That's... Yeah, but then if you if you pick Handlock and then he switches into Hunter, you're in big trouble, I suppose. You give away a yeah. series lead for nothing. I don't, I don't think Handlock's good versus either of these decks, though, so... Like, it makes a lot of sense to be sacrificing it here, so to speak, for information. Like, say you queue into Hunter, and then Forsen doesn't want to switch. You know you can play Priest. And say you play Handlock here and he plays Hunter, and then he decides to switch. You know he's playing Mage, so you can play Hunter. And then vice yeah. versa. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, well, I guess we're going to find out in just a second what he chooses. It will be the, the Handlock. Okay, so I guess if we go by the logic of what you just said, it's the worst deck possible. See if it can sneak out any wins. But this yeah. is one of the toughest matchups for Handlock. For sure. It's just, it's just a big information. I think this is just an information battle for D2 at this point. Like, Handlock's just not good versus his lineup, so... Uh, it, it just makes a lot of sense to be... to be queuing it up, I think. Just get it out of the way. Bring out your dead. Undertaker start from Forsen. This is a this is one of the starts actually you need though, from Handlock to be able to beat this Hunter deck is yep. you want Ancient Watcher into Iron Beak Owl, and then you have Hellfire to shore things up if they get out of control, and you have Mortal Coil to help pick apart the board. So this is going to be a fantastic start for D2, and he's already putting himself in a pretty prime position to be able to win this game. He's still he's also got Molten Giant too, so he's got a lot of the backup he needs. It's still way too early to say yeah. like. He's going to win or not, though. Like, so much can change the difference between sure. drawing poorly for the rest of the game. And a nice caveat is he doesn't have to use Hunter's Mark. He still can yep. push through right now. I think you first draw with what you get with Web Spinner, right? See what beast you get. I think it's fine. All right. You have Snake Trap, and you also have uh, Scavenging Hyena Synergy. Yep. He, he sort of has the liberty also of, of uh, maybe being able to just forego killing this this ancient watcher and hope his opponent doesn't have something like mortal coil i think it's a reasonable line i mean we can see that d2 has mortal coil but uh, i certainly think it's that may be something he's thinking about yeah squeaking as much damage as possible as the hunter is really important here forcing really taking his time though thinking about all his options his best course is to kill off this Ancient Watcher to avoid the Mortal Coil, though, right? There's no other play that's yeah, optimal I mean, from, our point of, from our point of view? Yeah, I mean, from our point of view, sure, you definitely want to be killing this off, but um, he's thinking about how he actually wins the game versus his opponent's range, and it's not going to be trying to fight an attrition battle, I don't think, because eventually they just scale into bigger minions and take over. That's exactly what he's going to do. He's about okay, to get well, the bad news. Yep, that he has the exact card he needs in order to shut it down. Still two damage to the face, though, but there is some heal. Farseer can be really important. And damage back onto the Hunter while scouting for Snake Trap. Wow, lots of information already given to D2, and he taps. 
Yeah, but I don't, I don't think there's anything else other than the, hy the hyena. And pass. This is going to be almost certainly a Twilight Drake. This board's about to get real scary. Oh, and he picks up Sludge Belcher, too. That is really clutch. Yeah, he's a pretty big initiative right now. Can force and race. He has Hunter's Mark. He's got traps and bow up. Yeah, I don't think he's got an option to clear. Race. I think Sludge Belcher's going to do a lot of work here. Even if it's just fending off a few points of damage, it's it's like more than enough to... Oh my gosh, he gets a second Two Sludge Belcher. Wow. I think Sludge Belcher is the right play. Yeah. Uh, just, just really nothing else. Well, Molten Giant is also a possibility. Right? You want to put... That sets up a lethal for next turn? Um, sort of. I mean, your opponent definitely has ways to, to kind of disrupt that. You, sure. You, like, you got to be thinking about, like, Hunter's Mark. Um, the, the chance that your opponent actually just kills you on the backswing, because he's got seven damage out right now. So if you had, like, kill command, that would be mm -hmm. seven plus five, twelve. That would be 14. So it just it only makes sense to play Sludge Belcher, really. I agree completely. But... Oof, tough decisions. How do you use... Your mana and your turn efficiently this time around. Freezing Trap's got to be one of the worst draws, by the way. I think so. I was hoping for Kill Command, Beast, High Main even, right? Kill Commands, yeah. That's the draw he needs right now. <clears throat> he needs to draw damage or ways to fend off the board. So he pops the trap. If he pops a trap, he might get freezing anyways. So this freezing trap, again, redundancy. Yeah, I, li I like saving it here. There's nothing mad scientist on the board, I think. Yeah, and then uh, you pop the ability for yeah. snake trap. You force it. But then this iron beak owl allows him to push through. But then the freezing trap. Ah. Yeah, this is, this is actually lethal. He's got eight sure? and then three from Hellfire, yeah. But then so he can just silence. No, oh, he's got a freezing trap. There's freezing trap, yeah. I forgot about that. So it's not lethal. So if that's the case, I think he should be... He probably just doesn't attack if that's the, if that's the case then. But if he doesn't attack, force him to stop hovering over his damn mad scientist, I could calculate. Um, <laughs> he needs a taunt of his own. Well, he, can, he has this. I think he just molten giant and sludge belcher and pass. Like maybe you attack with the ancient watcher, but yeah, oh, it's too bad that he can't have a, a, a like a sun fury protector. So then he would earthen ring farseer taunt up with the molten giant. That would have been great. I I also don't think it's unreasonable to like play iron beak owl and hellfire. After you attack, of course. So like, you attack this, triggers the trap. He gets to find out it's snake trap. So now he can put yep. Iron Beak Owl on the, uh, on the hyena and Hellfire. So he'll take, ah, him down to right. he'll take himself down to seven. But Force doesn't have any cards left, so he can't actually die to kill command. So the only thing he actually dies to is, is Leroy Jenkins. He, there is a possibility though. If, he, if his opponent gets explosive trap off, off the mad scientist, and then he has kill command. He puts him down to two. Oh, but he he's Farseer. And he doesn't heal in time. Ugh. What's his trap? Snake, Snake trap. trap. That's going to do um, it. And D2 yeah. wins game two. Wow. Wow. All right. Really strong start. Ancient Watcher Owl is like pretty paramount to being able to win this. And then, of course, backing that up with Mortal Coil. And then scaling just a little bit into the mid game. Sludge Belchers, of course, pretty important. He didn't need the second one. Uh, but the first one was, I mean, that was a really big bump in the road for forcing to get past. So uh, no kill command in sight. It's just, you know, taking a bite out of him. And now at this point, he can just continue to play hand. Like, he can just cue handlock into this freeze mage. See if he can pick off a game and then go from there. Yeah, I wonder if he's running Ragnaros to improve this matchup a lot. Um, some people choose to go Ragnaros against freeze mage, but... Um, as long as you can get past this hunter, I feel like Forsen still has a chance. 
The problem is Hunter does have that flare and the burst damage to stop you. Um, but there are ways for you to win. It's not like yeah. impossible whatsoever. Yeah, I agree. It's definitely it's definitely possible to win. I mean, we've seen th this is the second like major uh, like heavily weighted upset match that we've seen so far this tournament. Mm -hmm. We saw Forsen beat a warrior deck with Freeze Mage, and now we've seen Handlock beat a Hunter deck. So it, it's not like it's not like it can't be done. I mean, I've seen. Hunter can definitely lose if it doesn't draw flare. Sometimes it can just fall behind and and not really have the grounds to, to make it up. Um, mm -hmm. D two is going to be switching, by the way. So uh, I imagine it's likely going to be Hunter, but we'll have to figure it out. Yep. Uh, traps are often useless for Hunter and against Freeze Mage because right. they're just using spells. And then if they get Ice Block up and they still have Alex Draza combination. You're in trouble. Not to mention they have Freeze, so they can stop your bow and uh, and halt your board from doing anything. And I believe Forsen's running also Sludge Belcher, so perhaps that also improves the Hunter matchup a lot, so that way he can stop taking damage. Um, not sure, though. A D2 is going to be switching. We just don't know what deck it is. Perhaps the Hunter to corner the Mage, get this series over with, and then move on to the last series of the, the entire tournament. Right. I think it's a good plan. I mean, it's, it's again, it's, still getting, it's pretty early for him in the morning. Uh, while he's it in Japan is. playing, so I mean that makes a big difference on you know, his decision on, on how quickly he wants to end this, so he can actually get some rest. He's got BlizzCon next week, so he needs to be getting as much of it as he can. So heading into Game Three, D2 once again with a two game to zero lead, and he's going to be swapping decks. Forsen is back against the wall. Freeze Mage is all he's got left. All right, so I guess we're going to go into the game in just yep. a second. Uh, silence. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. Like, a weird fan, like, just all of a sudden lit up right behind me. I thought everything was going to blow up. Wow. Maybe, yeah. Sounds dangerous maybe, over there at the ESL studios. No, it's fine. I, just, I thought maybe D2 was, like, overhearing what we were saying, and he was just trying to blow me up or something. <laughs> Think I'm BMing, are you? Perhaps not sure. Um, so D two, we didn't see, get confirmation of what he's switching to, right? Yeah, we didn't get any confirmation of what he's switching to. We just know that if he's switching, it means he's not playing handlock. That's the only thing we know about it so far. So right okay. in the game, I mean, Hunter, Hunter seems like a very basically. obvious choice. Yeah. Okay, as the freeze mage, uh, you want to get uh, the the good start though as fast as possible. I don't even mind. Yeah keeping Doomsayer in your opening hand and disrupt the board, but I feel like if you want to get your draws as much as possible, that's always, of course, the priority. Mad Scientists, draws. <laughs> my oh, control deck, that's control right. Tech. Forgot I about forgot this. about this card. Yep. Look at that beautiful pink beard gnome. It's luscious. Well, it's a slow start for D2. That's, that means it's a good start for Forsen. Oh, but he has Flare. Wow, on the very first pickup, too. It's fine. Uh, the flare might never be relevant if you don't have a good enough start to justify flaring. Right. Or keeping flare. Yeah. So fl flare is like, in this matchup, he should never be burning it until he's actually going to kill his opponent. Unless he has a second one. If he has a second one, it's okay to use one. But in general, you want to be saving this until you have a killing blow on your opponent. Right, so like, look, like, there's no damage being dealt. <laughs> Immediately, there's just a freezing trap activated. Yep, it's gonna deny a card draw. That's really the only. I mean, that's about the best value he's gonna get out of a freezing trap this match. Sure. Makes the most sense, and he's also stopping damage, which is important. Yep. Hulk gets a second, second freezing trap. Freezing. That's bad. Oh, makes okay. a huffer though. This is very likely to pull a Frostbolt. Yeah, you have to. You just can't take that damage anymore. Forsen got more draws, though. Uh, meanwhile, D2, just the world's slowest start for a Hunter. <laughs> He's got Web Spinner. Freeze Mage into, into turn four Web Spinner. Is, that's slow? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Drawing two Freezing Traps. You can tell that Forsen really doesn't want to strand this loot hoarder in his hand, but I don't know if he's got an option to play it, really. I think you can get away with playing it. 
But I think Arcane Intellect is a much stronger play overall. Yep. Like, the, the further you dig, dig into your deck, the more options you have at your disposal. The more likelihood you're, pick, you're picking up uh, cards that snowball on itself. Yep. Wow, choosing to save the bow. That's really Holding strange. The bow. Interesting. Mad Scientist comes into hand. He's at 10 cards. He needs to play Mad yep. Scientist or Doomsayer. It's kind of unfortunate he draws Ice Barrier here. You know, that's a card you want to be fetching out of your deck with, uh, with Mad Scientist. It's not like the worst card ever. It gets pretty good value. Yeah, uh-oh. Stream went down. Um, but even despite the fact that Ice Barrier comes in hand, he also has Duplicate, I believe. And if he gets Duplicate on Sludge Belcher or other cards that are really valuable to him, It'll be nice. The problem is his hand is also really jam-packed. So if it is duplicate, it comes to the point where he actually can't copy anything because it just gets tossed out or discards a, a card. I actually got duplicate off the uh, the mad scientist dying. Yeah, I like Doomsayer here. I think it's fine. Duplicate on the Doomsayer. If this Doomsayer dies, Forsen's burning his next card. No, no, it won't trigger on his turn. The secret. No, I'm saying if D2 kills it. Oh, I see what you mean. Yep. If D2 just, yeah. like, kill commands this out of irrational fear. How much damage does he have? He's got three, six, eight from the hero power. So that's just on board. He got 13 damage with kill command. That's already really close. Can you just slam Savannah Hyman here? And you're okay with losing the two twos plus the damage? Well, you'll the get the two twos. So, like, uh, yeah. you deal three points of damage to that. Leopard is going to trigger. So that takes him down to 13. You get the two two twos, and you have three, four, mm. five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, you have potentially lethal to turn after that. It lines up too perfectly with just flame strike and clearing the board. And, like, you need to be doing. I feel like it's more important to hero power every single turn. Like, high main often doesn't really get damage in, like, the, the reality of the situation. Develop Freezing Trap and just straight to the dome. Okay. I think it's a pretty good turn for Forsen. Not bad. Still, oh, he picks up Sludge Belcher. That's pretty good. I'm curious if Sludge Belcher is actually better than Ice Barrier. I think I want my opponent to like attack me one time. Sure, that's true. You want to gain that 8 health. It might be the yeah. difference maker. But if you play three <sighs> traps... Oh, is that oh game? Oh my gosh. He, no, it's not game yet, but he got, definitely got a second kill command. So I think High Main and Hero Power is definitely the play here. High Main, Hero Power. Yep, and then Flare, double kill command. Yep. Is there anything he can do to stop this? Um, now that I don't know. He needs to kill the beasts, right? He needs to kill off this high main, kill it with fire. But that should he can't kill it. Cause he's got to kill the tokens afterwards too. Uh, fireball, and then yeah, I think you're right. This high main's yeah, too sticky. Same. And, you know, that brings up an interesting thought of maybe the Ice Barrier being a better play. But at the same time, it's not like he had minions. <laughs> it's not like he had minions to start attacking into it, right? Oh! Oh, oh. Wow. And this is where the new BM Master will be crowned if D2 can out-BM Forsen. Oh, man. Oh, my this gosh. Dropping the thanks. There's the flare. Double kill command. D2 is going to take this first match three games to zero he has picked forcing apart in this match he's actually won three different games with th he's won three games with three different decks too uh so forcing maybe needing to